Hello everyone, this is Dr. Heather Yost and welcome to another episode of Take Your, or another episode to Take Your Life Back Summit. We're interviewing 21 experts on their particular roadmaps out of chronic pain, fatigue, and autoimmune disorders. And our purpose really is to help people feel hope, you know, to find the answers and to start healing. So today's special guest speaker is Anne Baroque and Anne actually healed herself of multiple sclerosis, has been symptom-free for 23 years. As a nutritional consultant, naturopath, award-winning author, educator, and inspirational speaker, Anne is passionate about helping people realize that the body has an innate intelligence that allows it to heal itself. She firmly believes that with choice and diligence, each of us has the power to overcome any challenge. She brings her personal experience and 19 years of private practice to help you heal and recapture your vitality, specializing in autoimmune disorder, and is an expert on candida. Her books include Healing, Multiple Sclerosis, The Candida Cure, and The Candida Cure Cookbook. I think we're all in for a really powerful, <laughs> information-packed half hour with Anne. So I was originally drawn to you, Anne, just based on your story and your energy and your drive to help people. So thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Before we dive in, can you tell us just a little bit about your journey and what happened 23 years ago? <laughs> I ate too many Big Macs. <laughs> um, well, it actually, it started way back when. It was, you know, I was a sugar addict as a kid, and I had been on so many antibiotics, sinus infections, tubes in my ears, uh, ear infections, um, colds, everything. And so I was really immune dependent so by the time I was nine because I had had it so much. And that really started the cascade. And then when I was a teenager, because I love sugar, I rotted every tooth out and had a mouthful of silver amalgam fillings. And my first real health crisis came at 18, 19. I had Epstein-Barr mono kissing disease. Right. <laughs> and I, I didn't get better. I, I basically saw these specialists. I was on more than different, 30 different medications. And uh, I was really toxic and dying. And I came across Dr. William Crook, who was really the second MD to popularize Candida, which is a yeast overgrowth. And that book fell in my lap and I took the questionnaire and I cried and I was like, mom, this is what I have. And so I started to follow the protocol. I got on an uh, anti-Candida diet. I took an antifungal powder called Nilstat and it took me a year to feel better. Wow. But then once I felt amazing, I didn't know that this could come back more virulently. So I went back type A, crazy ways, sugar started to creep in. And at 24, I was in a restaurant, and to you, it would look like I had a conscious epileptic attack. And I couldn't breathe, swallow, move, and I started to spasm uncontrollably. And it was literally within two weeks of testing, and the doctor says, great news is you don't have cancer. The bad news is you have multiple sclerosis. And basically, we have chemotherapy. Get ready for the wheelchair. And I looked at my mother, and I didn't even know what this was. I was 24 years old, and I wasn't doing what I do now. And I said, mother, if I take this chemo, I'm not going to make it. I just knew how fragile I was that I wasn't going to tolerate it. And so it took a lot of courage, I think, to be an only child. My mother supported me and said, okay, let's get out of here. And there was yeah. very little information at that time. I was like in an alternative bookstore called The Bodhi Tree in LA that doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> there was one book on multiple sclerosis. And you know, my little, little research I could do because I was basically bedridden six, eight months. I could walk to the bathroom, get back to the couch, but I had trouble breathing, swallowing, moving. I was terrified to be in my body. And I really just kind of put together a self-help program to work on candida. I got back on an anti-candida diet. I took out 16 silver amalgam fillings. I took minimal supplementation and I worked on emotional mental layers. And it was a four-year journey. I survived a near-death experience, and I survived a suicide attempt. So I really wow. cracked physiologically and psychologically, but in hindsight, it was really a shamanic journey. It was really what I was supposed to go and, and live through and not only just get better, but it led me to the path of being a healer that I've been for 19 years now. I was in the record business. I, wouldn't have, I was so far away from what I'm doing now. Right. So, I really, you know, learned every aspect of mind body going through that because there was no roadmap. So I hit so many walls, but I found so many pearls to be able to give back. That is amazing. That's amazing. I think that story alone is going to help people realize that no matter what they're dealing with, there might be answers, you know, they can feel hope that there's something on the other side of it. 
Well, absolutely, because what I discovered is the biggest thing I changed was my belief system that the body had the intelligence to heal. Now, that didn't mean I didn't cry every day. It didn't mean I didn't have waves of panic. I mean, I really was in a body that I wanted to flee from every day. But the more I had incredible tenacity and the more that I just hung on to my belief and then slowly I started to see symptoms dissipate. I started to have more strength. I had more mobility. I didn't, you know, I was able to, I actually felt better within like maybe a year and a half. I moved up to Northern California because there was better oxygen levels, not so polluted. Mm -hmm. And, but if I pushed it, I would still have an attack. So it really took me four long years before I stopped looking over my back to go, is this really gone? Right. And um, facing you. Yes. Yeah. And the reality is that we don't come from a philosophy in medicine in this country, how brilliant the body is. And the key is it all comes down to inflammation. But we don't know, you know, doing a seven day juice fast is not enough to wipe out 20, 30 years of, you know, bad habits. Right. So, so the key is you've got to go a little deeper and discover more of the root causes, which we're going to discuss. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And before we get to that, I think so many people are probably thinking, what is candida? I mean, what is it and how does it feel? It's not a song. <laughs> it's actually, uh, it's a yeast overgrowth. So basically we're hearing about the microbiome, which is all the bacteria in the GI tract and the balance, but you want to have about 85% good bacteria, 15% not so good. And in that 15% is single celled yeast candida. And really the un discovered territory is the microbiome, which is the fungal part of the body. And that's what I'm trying to bring to light because I think science is right on my tail. But the single celled yeast is in male, female, child. So guys don't run away. This is, applies to you too. And the things that will start to put it into an overgrowth state are one dose of antibiotics in your lifetime. You could have been right. seven and had strep throat, steroids, birth control, hormone replacement, chemo, radiation, sugar, stress, alcohol. Let's just take an example. You're seven, you have an ear infection. When you take those antibiotics, it wipes out good and bad bacteria because it can't distinguish. And without enough good bacteria, they use multiply. And people, that was 25 years ago. How could that be me? And I say, what do you love to eat? How do you manage your stress? Everything that turns into sugar rapidly is going to feed this yeast through a lifetime. So breads, cheeses, pastries, soda, uh, wine is liquid sugar. And eventually it'll turn to a root fungal form. And it can easily burrow out of the intestinal tract, as we know, as leaky gut, when we have more uh, permeability. And I think we're seeing so much of this today because of also gluten and genetically modified food organisms. But here's what people need to know right away. There is no definitive test for candida, so save your money. And there's no definitive test in my mind yet, even for leaky gut. It's, an, it's a given to me. After 19 years of practice... Everybody pretty much walking in my office has a dysbiosis, an imbalance in their gut, and candida is either mild, moderate, or severe. Severe would be people that are dealing with autoimmune disease, chronic conditions, and cancer. So the, the best thing to do is I put people on my 90-day protocol because it's only going to help you remove infection inflammation, which is the root cause to everything. So it's, I want the test perfected, but we're not quite there because yeast and parasites are invasive. So they'll hide in the tissues and organs. So that's why I want you to, even if you take the questionnaire in my book, you might score low. Don't assume that that doesn't apply to you. My advice is everybody needs to hit the reset button. So it's worth doing. So would you say that an average person that's eating, say, a standard American diet is almost like they should expect that they probably have some sort of microbiome issue um, as well as like mild, moderate, or severe yeast? Absolutely. If you live in this country, because we're having genetically modified foods, we have environmental overload in the food, air, water, and stress levels are really high. And so when I am working with someone, I already know that bacteria is also out of balance. There's probably some parasites because to finish the story is that when this fungus burrows out, it's really the waste products that come off the fungus that do the damage. And those mycotoxins will go where you're most vulnerable. So for some, it might stay in the gut and people have irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or GERD. Uh, for others, it'll, the brain gets leaky, that barrier, and they might have brain fog, anxiety, depression, MS, Alzheimer, uh, mental illness. It's all connected. And the more that you don't address it, um, it becomes multiple systems that get affected. But you know, minor cases of candida are fatigue. 
not able to lose weight, even if you're following a strict uh, calorie diet, um, usually just feeling brain fog and just not feeling great. I mean, those are the subtle symptoms. You don't have to have one GI symptom to be loaded with fungus. Because for males, it's usually the prostate has problems, toenail fungus, jock itch, and sinus issues. That's usually so like not constipation or things like that. It can happen, but that you can still have yeast and still move your bowels every day and not be constipated. Right. So that's the thing is people think, oh, my gut's perfect, so I don't have an issue with this. And I said, no, no, let's examine. If you've got rheumatoid arthritis or you've got cancer or you've got uh, asthma, it's all connected. So I think the question would be for the lay audiences, what, how do I know, or is this something that really everybody should be thinking maybe seasonally or yearly or quarterly, uh, taking steps necessary to sort of correct this, especially if they're, stand, they're, they're eating a standard American yeah. diet or the SAD diet? I would say to this, I think at least, you know, if they did my Candida Cure program in my book, I think everybody could use that once. And then because the way I educate you in the book is how to keep the gut protected. So whether that be staying on probiotics or rotating with herbal antifungals, because you're, there's times you're not going to be, you know, I don't look at my program as deprivation. I'm going to pull things such as alcohol, sugars, gluten, dairy, and corn, even fermented foods. I know everybody talks about this, but I like it can create more of a histamine response the first 90 days. So I like more and very high grade fermented foods. I don't like things like kombucha and uh, sometimes some of them are made with vinegars and pasteurized milk that I don't like. But the key is to pull off all that initially. And then when you get feel better, we reintroduce and hopefully you'll go to a new balance point, which is 80% you'll stick to an anti-candida diet that's expanded and once or twice a week indulge. I don't think bodies are getting away with having wine every night or sugar every day or dairy every day because the volume of what I'm seeing is people are coming in now with two, three autoimmune and cancer on top of it. It's just, we're living in a very toxic time. So there has to be a little more personal accountability, but it's not like you're on a diet forever. It's really about removing inflammation so that you have amazing energy, you sleep well, you have clarity and focus in your mind. So my advice is that everybody needs to at least hit it once because I'm really saying generously that one out of two people have it when really it's more like one out of one. Right, right. And you speak of, uh, you mentioned cancer as well as digestive issues, candida and so on. How is cancer connected to this? Or My, autoimmune disease connected to candida? I believe that the fungal toxins basically disrupt the immune system. And so when you have, you know, your body's become under siege with this for a certain period of time and you're having chronic stress with it, the, you know, the immune system is either going to go haywire and attack itself and you come up with an autoimmune condition and that might be connected more to genetic predisposition, whether it's going to be MS or rheumatoid arthritis or scleroderma. And with cancer, I believe that it turns on cancer viruses. So it is my belief that when someone has cancer, you also have a body that's full of fungus. And I think one of the ways to help have better success rates beyond the drugs that we do is focus on candida. Right. So I think that they're both, um, it's tied in. And it's something that because it's part of our natural ecosystem, it's so easy to get out of balance. That's why it's a problem because everybody's had some sugar. Everybody's typically taken an antibiotic along the course of their life, uh, periods of stress. And so we weren't educated how to keep the gut balanced. And that's why we're having all these issues. And so it's, you know, it's not, um, I'm really not overestimating this. I've been doing this for 19 years. And if anything, I'm seeing more issues and more complex organisms because we've become antibiotic resistant, which has created some super bugs. And so it's not just about yeast these days. We gotta look at bacteria and parasites and that's something I address more with herbal antimicrobials. So it's something to be taken seriously. And I believe most disease starts in the gut. Right, right. And the gut, to my understanding, is really um, tied so closely to the immune system, which people don't think about. Like if they have a gut issue, they, they have an immune system issue. It is because 80% of your immune system is in your GI tract, you know? So it's, that's the thing and why I understood how to get people well is because after what I went through, it's a holism. You know, you see maybe a specialist and I'm not anti-Western. We need drugs, we need surgery. I'm open to everything, particularly because right. things are complex these days. 
But the issue is that when you realize that one system speaks to another, you know, a lot of people will come in with thyroid issues when I see them. And I'm like, well, I don't want to go to that directly. Let's get your gut balanced. Let's decongest your elimination organs. Let's get your adrenals working better and your blood sugar balanced. And typically, the rest of the endocrine system snaps in and I don't ever have to address the thyroid. So right. I don't like to target what I feel may be a secondary issue when you go to the primary. Right. And that's really the way I look at it is because I like less testing, save you money, get to it, just start to clean out. And then if you're really having problems and you're not getting well after 60, 90 days, that's the time then to go get an allergy test. Because I think food allergy testing is premature. You've got a gut that's inflamed. It's going to show things that maybe aren't accurate, uh, foods that you eat a lot of that maybe are just really benign, not really, you're not really sensitive to. So clean out the body first. And then if you're really hitting some walls and not getting success, then test. You'll have a much more accurate picture of what's going on. Right. I agree. Yeah, I agree. What do you think about, I think there might be a lot of listeners out there thinking as they listen that, oh my gosh, I took who knows how many antibiotics and as just a child, much less as an adult, what would you say to the people that maybe are listening thinking, I'm screwed. I mean, I've taken so many antibiotics and I, I don't go to the yeah. bathroom, but once a week, I mean, what would you say to those people? Do the program. Because the reality is that if you're not moving your bowels daily, there's definitely candida issues going on. You need a transit time of at least 24 hours and go once a day. <clears throat> so the reality is that you're not screwed because this is actually a very easy program. And the way that I designed it, it wasn't just being in the trenches and seeing so many clients. I realized that when someone walked in, these were the things I can tell you that are given for at least 90% of the population. Their gut is out of balance, so they have dysbiosis, yeast overgrowth, parasites, et cetera. Their blood sugar is either, hypoglyc they're either hypoglycemic or hyper, which would be more in pre-diabetic diabetes. And their adrenals are tired from too much stress. Their liver gallbladder, I call it the oil filters congested. And the kidneys, the blood, and the lymph need to be filtered. And so if I come in, with that approach with herbs and teas to decongest and rebuild, it's literally like hitting the reset button. And so you're not screwed. It's like committing 90 days, which goes by like that. Within 30 days, you feel at least 60% better. Within 90 days, you're like a brand new person. You're educated, you're balanced, you're clear. And now you'll know how to go about life in a different way. Because once you regain that clarity and energy and whatever you were dealing with, the symptoms, you don't want to lose that again. So mm. this isn't like, I don't know how to say it, is I always take the emphasis off deprivation and come into removing infection inflammation, think in 30-day increments, and before you know it, you're on the other side, and then, you know, you're feeling so much better. Right. I think that's the key that people need to know. There is, you can heal. The body is self-healing. It is. And I want to mention another good point here is that people go, oh my God, I'm a massive sugar carb addict. And I said, that's fine because you know how many people I see that are? But one of the formulas I work with is gluco-ABX and it really does help balance the blood sugar and it really neutralizes those cravings. And then when you also work with herbal antimicrobials, you also take away because it's the yeast and the parasites that are craving for whatever food it is that you desire all the time. So when you work and get the gut balanced, and then you balance blood sugar, it's easier than you think. It's not all willpower. So maybe um, if you can expand a little bit, I think a lot of people feel as if I'm craving sugar, I'm craving this, I need this, when really it's their body, not their mind. I think that what happens is when you do a program such as mine, you're able to discriminate. And so when the chemistry gets balanced, right. Then what's left is your psychological, which is much easier to tackle. And then you might realize, you know, I've been using food as an emotional pacifier. And that might be where then you incorporate therapy, emotional freedom technique, um, you know, other ways to go about it. But it becomes a division because most people don't even know if it's coming from a physiological point or psychological, but they're overwhelmed. And it's like they got to have their fix, like I did until I was 18. I was a sugar act until I got sick with mono. And the point is that when chemistry gets balanced, people get centered, the neurotransmitters are more balanced, and it's not this obsession. And what's left is very workable. How long does it take people to feel like those cravings stop on your program? Oh, within the first month. It can be as fast as two weeks, and usually by the first month. It's very rare that it goes past that. 
And the only time it would be is if people are just doing the anti-candida diet and maybe taking an antifungal, if they're not working the other elements that I talk about, like a blood sugar formula and working with the adrenals and the you know um, extra vitamin C and E, they're not putting it all together, then it might go on a bit longer. But the point is I really try to be, I've seen so many people that are addicted to carbs and sugar. So that was something that when I had to keep refining and create the alchemy of how to get people healthy as quickly as possible, that was one of the key things was dealing with blood sugar. Right. How does it affect the recovery process, so to speak, should somebody decide to eat sugar in the middle? Um, cheat days, so to speak. Right. You know, if you're going to stick to 80% of the program, you're going to see rapid results. So if I tell people if you have one or two cheats during the month, don't beat yourself up, get back on track. But if you're 50% or less, and meaning every other day you're eating something, it's not the best time to tackle it because you're gonna kinda of almost feel like you're in that initial die-off response when you feel a little worse before you feel better the first week, where you might get headaches, tired, maybe a cold flu because you're purging everything. Right. So if you're kind of fluctuating eating junk every other day, you're gonna feel that through the month and that's not what you want. So I'd say, you know, 70% or better for sure, you're gonna see the results below that. It may not be the best time to go for it. And right. if you were in that case, then I would say, we'll keep working on the food part and keep eliminating stuff, but maybe back off on the antifungals until you're ready to put it together. Right, emotionally, you're saying, yeah, and having a game plan. Well, yes, and what I'm saying is just physically so that you're not feeling horrible and having die off all the time. Because if you're having a day where you ate cleanly and the next night you had wine and cheese and you're like, oh, I feel like a hangover headache, you don't want to keep feeling that the whole time and go, this program didn't work for me. And I said, well, it may not be the time then to implement the whole right. thing. You got to work the program for the program to work. Correct. Right. Yeah. So do you have a, a, a huge success story in addition to yours, somebody that you've taken care of that came to you? suffering and maybe couldn't put the pieces together that you put the pieces together for them and they overcame many i mean that's the beauty of the work i mean i've been privileged and honored to deal with so many clients uh, over the years and because i specialize in autoimmune i've had some incredible stories i mean i've had a scleroderma case where she had it for 20 years and now is fine and uh, oh. i've had a woman who actually didn't even deal with me directly but was in a wheelchair with MS for 15 years and now is walking and is working with the cane. She's almost without having used the handrail and it's taken her commitment. It was two, I mean, she might be gone in two and a half years now, but she's been a soldier and it was so important that she started a support group for my protocol, which was amazing because it changed her life. And so I've had many people who have had autoimmune turn around. I mean, one of my, one of my favorite cases was a 14 year old. I might have only been in practice for two years. And this, he came in and he was having literally eight bloody diarrhea movements a day. He was oh skin and bones when he came in and he was working with a top specialist in Los Angeles. And he had been already on three big bouts of steroids and taking 40 acetyl pills, which are a day, which are anti-inflammatories. And the physician said, if you have another bout, we're taking your colon out. And I'm thinking the kid's 14, he's never been on a date. Jeez. The mother brought him in and I looked at him and I said, you're not going to like me because you're not going to eat pizza with your friends and this and that. But within one month, we had him to normalize stools and no blood. Within three months, he was like a brand new person and he's fine to this day. Unbelievable. Based on managing it too, he fixed it and then he's managing it. Correct. Correct. And the thing was that you know, what I remember when I would get emails later on from his mother, I think gluten was one of the biggest aggravators in dairy. So if he, you know, tempered into that, you know, but it was never, you know, he never went back to what he had. We really turned the condition around and it was amazing. And it really was another testament to how the body knows how to heal. You just have to give it that right environment and long enough. That's the key is we want the quick fix. And trust me, I'm someone who doesn't have a lot of patients and I want that quick fix for everyone. So I've condensed it as fast as I can into 90 days. And obviously for people who have chronic conditions autoimmune, it's going to be longer than three months, but you're going to see enough improvement to know you're on the right track. 
Right. And I think people have to realize that if they have a condition that's produced symptoms of some sort, it's been underlying for so long and, and you have to rewind out of that process. You well, that's, that's a great point. The great point is people think when they get diagnosed with whatever MS or scleroderm or cancer that it happened overnight. I said, no, that's 10, 15 years in the making. Right. Before you yeah. get the diagnosis. Yeah. So it may not turn around and they take that long to turn around. But what's important is to understand that you need time for the immune system to communicate properly. That's what we're doing. I don't heal anybody. Your body does it. I get the mess, get the inflammation out, the infection out, and then your immune system knows how to heal your body. Right. That's amazing. People need to hear that. Yeah. Where do you, just out of curiosity, where do you see yourself in five years? I mean, I know I, you have dedicated your life to helping other people get results like you've gotten in the last 23 years, where do you see yourself in five years? I see myself speaking to large groups of people. I feel that, you know, I've been in the trenches for a long time and I have a lot of pearls because when you also deal with complicated situations, you have a spiritual body, you have an emotional and a physical. And so my gift is kind of being able to look at both and tune in with my clients. And I like to deal with a lot of the mind mechanics uh, about how we get stuck in emotional mental patterns, because I think that's one of the things that shuts down the immune system the fastest. Right. And so I see myself educating people on more of a grand scale. I think there's more books in me, but I really am always looking for refinement in how I can expedite people's healing and how I can eliminate their suffering whether it's spiritual, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical. I'm very dedicated to that because I've, you know, just because I conquered MS doesn't mean I'm human. I've had to, I had to go through a total hysterectomy uh, five years ago. And that was a process where I really learned about hormones and took one for the team, let's say. And I was following my protocol, but it was a lot of stress trying to save the world in essence. And I learned it's all about also nurturing yourself. And I had to find that balance. And what that meant. And so I've always been kind of the petri dish in the sense that, and the guinea pig that when I go through something, I immediately give it back to the planet and the people because we're all looking for answers. We're all in this together and there's no perfection. So that the next five years, I think will be a journey where I get to um, enjoy many more people on a broader scale. So how can they find you? If somebody web, asks me this is like, I need to talk to her, how do they find you? Um, go to my website. So it's annbaroque.com, A-N-N-B-O-R-O-C-H.com. And I do a few things. I do Skype consultations or phone for those people who can't see me in person. So anybody in, New York. in the world can get to you. Correct. Okay. And I do sometimes just half an hour visits where people want to ask as many questions because they've already read my book, or they might want the two hour session where I create a program with them and personalize it. And then uh, also my website, we'll talk about, there's a free email newsletter sign up, which I'm starting to do videos now for that and going to be more frequent there to educate you. And there's a ton of stuff on my website because then it links to my book. So really it's through the site that you can find out everything about me. And broke.com. Yes. Great. I'll make sure to include that so they can easily link through and okay, get wonderful. Through very quickly. Before we wrap up, uh, this has been really amazing and great to get to know you. And I know the, list, the listeners are really gleaning a lot of pearls from the information that you've brought. Just for fun, um, if we were to open up your refrigerator, what would be two things that we would always find in your refrigerator? Okay, Hagen dazs No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you would, uh, let's see, you would always find some sort of green. So whether it's watercress or spinach or something, because I will throw, either I'll saute it with the poached egg or I'll put it into a smoothie. And you'll always find I'm a guacamole freak. So, <laughs> and I have, I love these crackers called Jill's crackers. So they're, they're made with almond flour and stuff. And I, and that's one of my little snacks, but that's what you'll always find in my refrigerator. That's awesome. <laughs> if you were stuck on a desert island and you could only bring two nutraceuticals or products with you, what would you bring? Vitamin C. And why? Because it's so important for every metabolic process in the body, the immune system, your collagen. It's, uh, I think it's just one of the things I couldn't live without is vitamin C. The second one would be a toss-up. It'd be, I love vitamin E for anti-inflammatory processes and or maybe B-complex. 
So, you know, if I had to break it down, it's, it's hard because as we go on now, you'd have to I, arm wrestle to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I, I, I love my superfood. <laughs> I love my superfood called Nano Greens. That's also another amazing product that I love. But vitamin C, if I had to pick one, it would be that. Okay. That's awesome. Thank yes. you. That's fun. Well, thank you for joining us and gifting us all of your pearls and being a part of the Take Your Life Back Summit. I appreciate your time and I look forward to speaking to you again. My pleasure. Well, thank you for putting this on. Yeah, you're welcome. For all of our listeners, be well, take care, and we'll see you on the next episode.